I want to touch upon some Russian dolls, and I had a whole bunch I wanted to go through, and I'm going to save some of those for next week, but I do want to show you a couple of those. And this is something that, again, like I said earlier, not to soft sell you, but I like to see my service as something that, number one, pays for itself, and that goes back to like the Waddles from, what's the name of that book? The Science of Getting Rich. If you provide more in use value than you take in money value, I think you said it a little bit more eloquently than that, then you'll do very well. You will have a successful business. So that's kind of my mantra. It's like, okay, let me let me make sure you get your money's worth. And how can you get your money's worth? And in not being just a tip sheet, you also get some ancillary ideas. Okay. So I think the Russian dolls and possibly opening gap reversals. And I did have one to show you on CPE, and I'll save that for next week. But I think that's where you can get some added value. So just one example recently was on the Landry list was Coinbase. And this is the list I published every day for the upcoming day. And this is obviously the tracking sheet over here with the official recommendations. But there are some other ideas that I show over here. And anything that's clicked off is a short. By the way, it'd be kind of fun to go in and look at these banks now and see what they were doing. We tried to short this fifth third forever. It's probably imploded since we stopped trying to short it. Anybody ever short that? Anyway, so coin was in there. And the Russian doll is basically just a pattern within the pattern. So here we had like a big picture cup and handle type of pattern. And it was also a first thrust. And I think it, I don't think it was a bow tie, but it might have been a bow tie too, but it's definitely a first thrust. So what we're doing is we're not position trading here. We're looking to take an intraday trade. But Dave, I thought you talked about not day trading. Well, I probably day trade a little too much, but I'm here anyway. And if you have a job where you have the luxury of being able to look at a computer, in place an order or two, and I'm not saying stare at that screen all day long, although I am kind of guilty. My shoulders are tight right now. My upper back is kind of aching a little bit, so I know I spent too much time on screen. But if, if you could just plan out something like this, where you have a big picture pattern behind you, many, 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 many years ago, I knew a day trader, and he would look at weekly charts and monthly charts and all these huge charts and do all this analysis. And then I don't, I wouldn't say he's scalping, but pretty much close to scalping. Then he'd go in and just get one little piece, but he made sure he had as much stack behind him as possible. And this is probably kind of helping me along the lines of thinking with the Russian dolls. So anyway, you got a daily setup. And then what I did was I bought it during this late day breakout, and I'm just using a simple breakout. You could have a trigger, I would say, maybe right below the prior day's high, just in case people have it above, okay, like your longer-term pullback players might have, and look to try to capture an intraday trend. Now, on this one, if memory serves, I put my order in, I put my trailing stop order in, and then I put my IPT in, and it all kind of unfolded fairly nicely and I was very hands off. And that's the ideal intraday trade. Now notice I only did 100 shares, okay? And this is on a, I think this account is roughly like 100K. This is the same one I use with the service. So I do a lot of the service stuff in this account. If I show you something, I'm willing to do it myself is the point I'm trying to make. And how did this one turn out? So we exited market on close. So that's it. That's the goal. Ideally, you want to ride it all day long, but this trade worked out nicely to where we rode it all afternoon. That's a 15-minute bar. So it was three points and eight cents times 50 shares, buck 54, $154. And then on the remainder, it was 5.99. So much better than a poke in the eye if you could pick up a little trade like that. Now, here's one that I played day before yesterday. And this one was a little too squirrely, a little too crazy to trade as a position trade. I don't know what the HV on this thing is, but I think it's like 162 or something crazy. 
<laughs> I don't know what it is. I think it's like 162.45. <laughs> but you can see it did have a nice accelerated uptrend and it did pull back. And to me, it looked like at the least it was getting ready to pop higher in the direction of the trend. In other words, a little bit of a reversion to the mean type of pop was due. So it came in and it opened a little weak, but then it began to rally like crazy. So I said, you know what, Dave? Let's put in an entry up here. And if it keeps rallying, I'm going to go ahead and get in. Now, this is a great example of entering on the first 15 minute bar. I get this question all the time. People are like, why do you beat the dead horse? Like, because I keep getting these same questions. <laughs> and you people, not you people here, but you people don't listen. <laughs> you know? Anyway, some people do listen. But the thing is, you have to be willing to take a trade early in the day. Now, it pains me sometimes to buy that high tick on the first 15 minute bar. And I'm like, oh, you big dummy. If you just waited 15 minutes, if you just slept in, whatever, you would have missed this losing trade. But sometimes, most of the move can be made in very, very early trading. If you sit around, sit around, sit around, sit around, waiting for a certain amount of time to pass, you're going to miss those moves. Now, I had an IPT up here, and if memory serves, it was a half a point. And you can see that in this particular case, it did kind of look like a fake out in early trading. And maybe I would have been better waiting a little while but it sure looked like it was going to go straight up i got stopped into it got the initial profit target and then stopped out what was interesting about this one was i remember triggering in and it kind of me entering going sideways and i went for a walk or i did something for a while i got i think it's the only time i got out of the office in like the last two weeks and i got an alert on my phone i'm like oh crap probably just got stopped out of something, you know, with the luck lately. And then I realized that, oh, this thing actually hit the initial profit target. And because I had a order on the remainder, it just stopped out. So basically here was a day trade where I wasn't looking at the screen all day long. I just put it on, let it unfold and took it off. And I grabbed a downloaded spreadsheet. So that was two days ago on the 13th. And I just did a thousand shares on this particular account, and it netted 450 bucks. That's better than a poking eye, okay? Uh, 450 a day. What's that? That's uh like 112 thousand dollars a year if you do that every day. Of course, you're gonna have losses though, so that's you can't just say that you're always gonna make that. But as you can see, it pays sometimes to put the bigger picture behind you. Go in and do an intraday trade. Use a stop to enter. Use a trailing stop to protect you and use a limit order for your IPT. Now, here is one that I talked about in Facebook when you guys were talking about trades. So I talked about it here. Reason we have this blanked out is not everyone in the Facebook group is a member of the trading service, and we're working on that. We'll we'll fix that longer term. So I went with the AUUD is like the ATOS. It was set up super risky stock. By the way, one thing that I really want to flesh out over time is, is how to pick the best ones of these for intraday trading. I keep trying to stop saying the word day trading, but intraday trading. And one thing I've seen notice is, and I know you guys who day trade a lot are probably saying, duh. But one thing I've seen and noticed that you, is that you really have to have a lot of volume and a lot of liquidity. And something like the ATOS and the AUD fit the bill. So anyway, most everything I show you as I preach, I like to make sure that I've mentioned it before I got in. And we were talking trades, when was this? Yesterday. And I said I liked it above 550. So let's take a look at that. And this again was on the Landry list. So 550 right about here. And I put in a stop entry and I went about my life. And it came dangerously close to triggering. And then it sold off, sold off, sold off, sold off. This thing really 
imploded. Now you can see why this is probably a little too volatile for position trading. That's a 25% move lower, if the math in my head is correct. So to that I say, thank you, baby Jesus. Eight pounds, 12 pounds, baby Jesus. Now, all kidding aside, the reason I wanted to show you this example, and I actually had a losing example too, and we'll I'll show you that next week. <laughs> Isn't it funny? I didn't have time to squeeze in the loser. <laughs> but I will, I promise. When, when I do the live presentation, I'm like, and now I'm gonna show you something that a guru's never shown, and the whole audience wakes up and you know. <laughs> They sit up in their seats, and then I'm like, a losing trade. And I'll show you some losing trades next week. Don't worry about that. But anyway, the reason I want to show you this was something as simple as waiting for an entry. Not every time, not all the time. Believe me, I bought the high tech more than I care to admit, okay? Just bad luck, right, when that happens. But every now and then, and, and actually quite often, using an entry above the market will keep you out of trouble. And it kind of reminds me of, I saw a recent quote from Michael Jordan and paraphrasing him, he said that there would be a lot more professional basketball players if people would just focus on the basics. And I think something as simple as waiting for an entry is one of those basics that not all the time, but quite often can keep you out of trouble. So I want to make sure I showed this one here. And here's another case where you put your order in and go about your life. I know easier said than done, and believe me, I watch the screen way too much. I'm not holier than them, but I'm here anyway doing work. So it's it's kind of it's like the like the moth being drawn over to my trade station. I, I keep my trade station on a on a stand up desk, but it's it's a fixed stand up desk, and I'm building a much bigger stand up desk because I don't want to have a trade station where I sit down and before you know it, I'm slouched over that desk all day long i want to at least stand and burn a couple of calories in here <laughs>